Hello everyone and uh, welcome. So we're now on the third part of this tutorial series and uh, what we're going to be doing is um, kind of elaborating on a lot of the stuff we've already learned and we're going to kind of learn how to put it to better use or different use and um, kind of just do some of the same things that we've done in the past like we're going to use the ray trace but this time instead of using uh, the ray trace just to trigger something we're actually going to do a highlight so we're going to get a nice highlight on this uh, on this little uh, switch node and when we're looking at it and once we click it we're going to make this um, run an animation which will uh, kind of show what selection we've made at the same time we're going to be working on animations and we're going to take those a little further because now we're actually going to control their speed um, and we're going to be able to do a bunch of the stuff that we've done before we're just kind of elaborating on a lot of what we've already learned um, so you can kind of take things to a slightly higher level all right so uh, let's um, let's go ahead and give this a play and let's see uh, what we're going to be working with here okay so I'm going to go ahead and run the project And I'm just going to fly over to it just because it's a little easier. Hit F2. And now, as you can see, when I look at the switch, we're actually getting that switch to highlight now. Um, it's a pretty small switch, so it's kind of hard to look at, but there it is. And as you can see, it's changing from yellow to white. And when we click it, we're going to actually move that with an animation. And then if we click it again, we're going to move it again, and we're going to click it again, it moves again. So there's three full locations, and each time our fans have gone ahead and moved at a different rate of speed. So it's actually a little easier if we just watch the shadow. So let's get that clicked. And now we can see that it's going to slow down. And if I click it again, it will start to speed up. But what's really nice is this logic will actually end up working um, no matter when we click it. So even if I were to jump to one again, it doesn't, it, it automatically smooths between them. So as you can see, it doesn't, you know, it, it works the way we would expect it. And this is all just using simple animations. So, uh, so it's going to be a nice little lesson, um, relatively simple and straightforward. Um, we've, we've kind of done... Like I said, we've done all this stuff before, but uh, we're going to kind of take it to a slightly higher level and kind of kind of learn how to do a little more with what we've already learned. So we're going to be using basically a raycast uh, with a mouse click to trigger an animation, which will then in turn trigger other animations. Uh, so this is kind of neat and kind of fun. All right. So uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do um, is run through, like we have with all the other, um, all the other tutorials uh, in the series, and we're going to start by just taking a look at how the animations were constructed. Okay, so um, rather than going into Maya and showing you all that, I'm just going to show you here in, uh, in, in the engine because I'm sure you get that part of it already now. Um, so we're just going to take a quick look and see what the pieces are that we have to work with. All right. So um, for the switch unit, we simply have a, a little switch unit here. And what we have is a series of positions that the, um, that the, the switch rotates to. So if I were to go to you know, switch off, we'll see that if I hit play, um, that it rotates to the off position. And if I select the medium, it rotates to the medium position. And if I switch to the low position, it switches to the low position. And the high switches to the high position. So, you know, nothing really complicated. It's just basically making a circle around this. So if we were to go low, medium, high, and then off. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what we have here. So we have four animations that we can play. And those will uh, rotate uh, the, the, the switch to the correct corresponding location. Okay, so that's, that's really all there is for the switch unit. And for the uh, ceiling fan, all I have is a very, very simple animation. Uh, let's go ahead and hit play on that guy. 
and we'll see that all it is doing is a, is a continuous loop. It's just one uh, singular loop. And we're just gonna control that with input parameters into the animation node, all right? So, uh, so that's really all we have for the animations. Um, really nothing uh, over the top here, all right? So let's, uh, let's go ahead and dig into some of the, 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 the logic of what's gonna make this function now, all right? So one thing that's nice with, with Stingray is that you can actually have two uh, unit flows open at the same time, and we're gonna wanna do that uh, right now. So let's just go ahead and double click on our ceiling fan, and then let's also, as you can see, I already have it open, but I'll show you how to do that. So we're just gonna select off, and we're gonna go to models, and we're gonna go to the switch, and we're gonna double click on the switch, okay? And that'll bring open both of your, your necessary parts, okay? And we're gonna go through them one at a time, but I just wanted to show you that you can actually do that. Because when you're coding, it's, it's really nice to be able to switch back and forth, especially when we have two things that have to talk to each other. Um, so, so yeah, so let's go ahead and start with the switch because that's where it all begins. And we're gonna kind of walk through this like we have everything else. And I'm just gonna kind of show you what I'm doing and, uh, and, and explain it as we go, all right? So the first thing that we do is I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and initialize this local unit variable, okay? And the reason I'm gonna do that is because unit spawned is kind of tricky. Um, you can place it multiple times, but it's really recommended that you don't. Uh, the other thing that's nice is to be able to actually see what unit you're grabbing, okay? So from the unit spawned, all I'm doing is I'm setting a unit variable uh, called switch unit, which is effectively just gonna say, you know, if, you know, it's just gonna say that this is the switch unit, okay? Which is really, in this case, me, which is the switch, okay? So that's all we're doing is we're, we're just passing the switch model, if you will, or the switch unit into this switch unit variable, okay? So this way we can call it anytime we want. We don't have to worry about whether or not unit spawned is gonna complain, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and, and, and relay that into here. Okay, so to do that, all you would do is go right click, variable, and you're gonna say set unit variable, okay? And then you're just gonna type in the name that you want it to be, which in my case, I set it to switch unit, okay? And for this, we want it to be a local variable. We don't want it to be a global variable. Um, so this way it's a, a little more efficient, okay? Because we're not gonna use this anywhere but in here. Uh, but we are gonna use it multiple times in here, so that's why we're gonna call it, uh, we're setting it to a unit variable. Um, so that's that, okay? So then once we have that unit variable set, we're just gonna select it from the unit spawn, so it'd be right click, event, unit spawned. Okay, and as you can see, it won't let me drop another one in here, so uh, that's why we do it. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you, you would just connect this to that, and the out, to the set, okay, and that'll that'll make this variable equal to whatever the unit is that spawned on here, okay. So once we have that done, we now can relay the switch unit anytime we want it, okay. So anytime we want to call switch unit, we can, okay. And we're going to use that right after this raycast, okay. The next part of the um, of the sequence here is to go ahead and get the raycast. Now, I'm not gonna go through all this again because we did it once before. Uh, it's effectively the exact same thing. All I did was copy it from the last, uh, from the last uh, record player and pasted it into here. Um, as I said, this is something you're gonna use all the time. Um, anytime you wanna raycast and, and select stuff, this is the basic um, functionality you're gonna wanna use. So, uh, so yeah. So the only thing that I did do is I set it to statics. I believe the last time it was set to dynamic. Because um, right now all I want to do is check for this object, which is a static object. I don't need to, to worry about um, anything beyond that. Um, to come to that really quickly, note that the, um, the, the physics actor is set to static. So this is checking to see that this is a static actor. Okay, so this is going to return a positive result on any time that it looks at something that is static. Okay, and how we're going to check to see if the unit is, uh, you know, the unit spawned, we're gonna use this set unit variable by getting the unit variable right here, okay? So we're gonna take the unit out from the raycast saying, okay, I hit something, and it's gonna say, okay, well, what was that that you hit, okay? And um, we're gonna be able to check to see if it's the switch unit that it hit, 
okay so that's basically what we're doing here um, now I'm gonna start on the top to go over the rollover color um, now this is checking every frame now the way it's checking every frame is by coming from the raycast we have this output okay and this is because our level update is happening every frame this out fires every frame okay so whenever we look at uh, the the object in question which is the switch unit um, we're gonna go ahead and do this compare okay because this is happening every single frame um, so it's gonna compare is this unit that I'm looking at equal to the switch unit yes it is okay great so then it's gonna go ahead and do a very simple material switch I'm not gonna go through all the material stuff again because we did it once before um, but all I'm doing is I'm setting the color to um, the, the the color of yellow and in when it's off I'm gonna set it to white okay so that's really all we're doing up here so the the rollover color is actually quite straightforward and, and, and really 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 easy to do um, once you understand this underlying principle of the raycast okay because all we're doing is we're just checking to see if the unit that is hit is equal to the unit um, in question or uh, or or the switch unit in this case okay and then we're just gonna say is it equal yes it's equal okay set the material variable uh, to a certain color and if it's not then set the material variable to a different color um, in this case I have white and yellow up on top okay um, now uh, we only wanted to do that to the switch plate so as you can see here the mesh name is the switch plate and just to reiterate if we go to materials we can see that switch plate material is right here okay so uh, which is right here so the switch plate is the mesh so switch plate is the mesh the switch plate material is the material slot and then we're just setting the variable color to um, to the color we want all right so that's how we're handling the rollover now for the actual mouse click this is where the meat and potatoes kind of come into play and we're going to do some pretty neat stuff in here so uh, so let's just uh, move through it one step at a time and it is a little complicated but you'll be able to get it it's really nothing um, over the top it just looks uh, a little a little intimidating all right so to start um, to start easily what we're gonna do is instead of checking it every frame what we want to do on this is we want to check when the mouse is pressed okay so because this unit is being output basically every frame from this level update we can interject that with this mouse pressed okay so now this though it's able to be read every frame we're only going to read it when the mouse is clicked okay so when the mouse is clicked we're going to see is this unit equal to switch unit if it is equal then we're going to go ahead and play a sound which is the clicking of the of the of the switch so it's going to make a little you know the click sound and then it's just going to relay out from there into our check okay so here's where we're going to do some pretty fancy stuff um, basically what we're doing is we're using this variable fan speed and I want you to notice that the fan speed is set to global okay so I, I feel you know what let me let me run through that one more time because I'm, I'm not sure that I fully explained it so when the mouse is pressed we're going to compare that the objects are equal um, so if it's equal to the switch unit it's going to go ahead and trigger a sound and the triggering sound is just going to relay that that trigger right through okay so we could even do this I'll do this just to make it a little easier because I don't want you to be confused by this uh, this switch sound it's really irrelevant all I'm doing is I'm just passing it through okay now once we go ahead and click and it passes this test okay it's then gonna hit this compare numerics okay and the compare numerics node is simply gonna be a way for us to see where it is in the fan speed okay so fan speed starts at zero and we do that in the level flow so let me show you the level flow really quickly um, I'm sorry this is a little all over the place but I kind of have no choice okay so right at the start of the game I'm setting in the level flow so if we go to level viewport level flow we can see that level loaded 
And here I'm setting fan speed equal to zero, okay? So as soon as the, the level starts, we're setting this global fan speed to zero, okay? So we always know that at the start of the game, it's set to zero, okay? Then inside the switch, what we're doing is we're gonna check against that fan speed, okay? And here we're gonna see, is the fan speed equal to zero? Okay, so we're gonna compare it on the first click. It's gonna go compare. Okay, is it equal to zero? Yes, it's equal to zero. Okay, so these two pass, right? This is now equal, right? So if it's equal, it is then gonna set the fan speed to one, okay? Then it's gonna go ahead and send a message to our fan, but we're not gonna worry about that yet. First, I want you to understand the logic of what's going on here, okay? So now, now, let's say we clicked it and we clicked it again, okay? So now when we do this passing of the test, right? We're gonna, we're gonna click it. We're gonna compare the object. It's gonna be, yes, I'm on the switch unit. But now it's in a different position, right? Now this is equal to one, so this is gonna fail, right? So it's gonna say, okay, this is actually greater than zero, okay? So then it's gonna go down here and it's gonna test it again. And it's gonna say, oh, are you equal to one? And if it is equal to one, well, then set it to fan speed two, okay? Now, if that, let's say we had clicked it three times and this is now um, equal to three or two rather, right? Now it's gonna set it to three. And then if it's equal to three, well, then we wanna set it back to zero again, okay? So as you can see here, all we're doing is making um, basically an if else statement, okay? If you know normal logic uh, or, or programming. Um, so if equal to zero, then do this. Else, do this. If equal to one, do this. Else, do this. If equal to two, do this. Else, do this. If equal to three, do this. Else, um, it doesn't have an else because this doesn't need an else. It, it, it will automatically uh, set it to zero if it's, if it's three and if it's equal to that, okay? So, um, because we never go above three, so it doesn't really need an else. This is the end of our else statement, okay? So that's basically what we're doing. Um, and you should know all these nodes. Um, the only one you might not know is the global, and that is simple. It's, it's just setting your, your get numeric variable to a global instead of a, uh, a local, and the global is available from everywhere. So again, in the level flow, is where we're setting that originally. And that's just something that I do. You could have set this anywhere, um, just so long as it happens when the game starts, okay? So if it was unit spawned or level loaded, this would have been fine. I just always put my global variable initializations in my level flow. It's just a good good habit. So this way you can always know where your, um, your global variables are initialized, okay? So, um, so again, let's just run through this one more time. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna test the um, test when clicked if it's looking at the switch. If it is looking at the switch when it's clicked, then it's gonna say, okay, it's equal. So let's go ahead and see what our fan speed is equal to. If our fan speed is equal to zero, it will uh, set it to one. If our fan speed is equal to one, it will set it to two. If our fan speed is equal to two, then it will set it to three. And if our fan speed is equal to three, then it will set it to zero, okay? So we're always setting it between a, a, a range of zero to uh, three, okay? And those are gonna correspond to our fan speeds um, equivalently. So one is equal to low, two is equal to, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, zero is equal to, um, Zero is equal to off, one is equal to low, two is equal to um, medium, and three is equal to high, okay? So all we're doing is using that number, and then we're setting the, the fan speed to that number. Now, the next thing we have to realize is that we have to send this message to the fans, okay? Because this is handling all of our stuff for our switch. We're playing our animation, Okay, so we're setting the, the animation here with just using a simple uh, clip, reset, and play. We're gonna set the animation to whatever it should be. So, you know, if it's set to one, well, then we're gonna set it to low. Okay, we're gonna play the low animation. If it is set to two, 
we're going to play the medium animation. If it's set to three, then we're going to set the high animation. If it's set to, um, to zero, then we're going to play the off animation. Okay. So really not, not crazy here. Okay. This is, this is actually pretty, uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. It just seems complicated because we have so much happening. Um, but really it's just a lot of the same, right? If you, uh, if you kind of look at this, it's, it's really just a compare. If it's equal, do something else, do something else, which is exactly the same thing. We're just incrementing it up. Okay. And, um, and we're just playing an animation at that time. One thing to notice though, is that I do set the, uh, the loop to false, okay? So on all of these animations, we're setting it to false. This way it just plays to the position and then stops, okay? And it plays to the position and stops. And if you notice, I set the blend time, oops, on this one I didn't actually, zero, two, um, or point two rather. Uh, the blend time is just to make it so that um, the switch kind of moves a little smoothly. Um, I didn't really feel like a state animation was necessary for this, though we could have done it with a state animation also. Okay, um, but effectively, uh, yeah, all we're doing is sequentially going through the different positions of the switch here. Okay, and now when we do that uh, positional uh, increment, we're sending out a message that is going to send to our fan to say, oh, something has changed. Okay, so if you look here, we have this external out event, okay, that is saying send message to level flow so that fan speed, uh, that, that, that the fan speed has changed. Um, now this is just a, a, a comment, but um, I, I do that so that I understand what's happening myself because it can get confusing. Um, so if we look at the event itself, it's change fan speed, okay? So what that's doing is once we've set this stuff and we've changed the global variable, we need to let our, um, our fan know that something has to be done to increment the speed of the fan itself, okay? So for that, we're using this event, um, external out event. Now to get those, we're gonna go right click, event, external, I'm sorry, it's uh, external, and external out event, okay? And we can create these from within any, uh, in any unit, and what it's going to do is it's going to send a message to our um, to our level flow, okay? And I'll show you what that does in a second, okay? And all it does is it relays whatever event comes in to an out in the level flow, okay? So here we're going to go ahead and say event, and we're going to call this whatever, right? So um, so we could send another event out if we wanted to, and it would be called whatever, okay? And to receive this external out event. We have to do that from level flow, and I'll show you why, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and save my changes, and I'm just gonna take a look at the level flow now. Okay, so here in level flow, we'll notice that we have this relay fan speed switched message to level units, okay? Now, what this is doing is it's receiving our change fan speed uh, command. Now, to notice that it's a level unit though, okay? So I wanna show you this because it's pretty neat. Um, one, when I delete this, right, all I have to do to get that, um, to get that, uh, event, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go right click, create level unit. Okay. And now you'll notice that in the, in the level unit itself, I now have this new output that isn't normally available. Okay. So if I were to grab any other level unit, right, like let's say to just grab the walls, right, and go right click create level unit, you'll notice that it doesn't have this change fan speed, okay? That is that custom event, um, it's, it's, uh, it's the custom out event or, the, um, or, or this external out event, okay? So it's now taking this and relaying it through that level unit, okay? So, um, so that's how you actually gain access to that, um, that event, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that here. And now if you notice these level units, the ceiling fans, um, they both have uh, the change fan speed as well, but that is because they have a custom in event, okay? So if we look at the ceiling fan now, we'll see that they have this external in event. So again, to get that, you would do event, uh, external, external in event. And whenever you put this, it's gonna now, if I were to put, you know, whatever on here, okay? and go to, and let's save that. 
And now I go back to the level flow. Now they won't update automatically. That's, that's kind of a bummer, but it's not really that big a deal. So we'll go external, external in event. I'm sorry, uh, we'll have to now grab our level units, forgive me. So let's grab the level unit. Let's go to level flow, right click, create level unit ceiling fan. And as you can see, we have the change fan speed, but we also now have whatever. Okay, and that is again, simply because I added this external in event. Okay, and now we can pull that and do whatever we want with it. Okay, so uh, just showing that to you really quick. All right, so I'm going to save this and I'm going to reconnect all this stuff again. Okay, so let's go to the level viewport. Let's grab our ceiling fan, level flow, right click, create level unit ceiling fan. And I'm going to drop that into here. And I have to grab it also for the other ceiling fan. Otherwise, only one would run. Okay, so right click, create level unit ceiling fan one, and connect it. Okay, so now what we're going to be able to do is relay from this, uh, from the switch. Okay, when the switch is told, okay, something has changed and the fan speed has altered, we can now send it to this external out event which we will then relay to our fan unit, okay? And we're gonna relay it again through the, the, the level flow. So here it's coming in, and we're gonna say, okay, the fan speed has changed from the switch. Go ahead and receive that now and do something with it, okay? So now we're at the point where we're gonna be looking at our ceiling fan to see what this, this relay is doing for us, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at our, um, our ceiling fan uh, unit and what it's doing. Okay, so let's go into here and let's jump into our ceiling fan and see what happens once that external in event is, is triggered. Okay, so um, before we begin with that, let's just go through what we're initializing. Um, so the first thing we want to do is create this new variable called current fan speed. Okay, so if we think of fan speed more as like desired fan speed and current fan speed as the current fan speed, that will be a little more, um, uh, I guess, obvious because when we switch it, we're going to be switching our fan to the desired fan speed, not what the fan speed actually is. Okay. So like, just like on a normal fan, right, it takes time for that speed to reach the fan speed, right? Or our desired fan speed. It doesn't just happen instantly. The motor has to spin it up and it has to get up to speed. And then once it gets to that speed, it's reached, you know, our current fan speed will be equal to our desired fan speed. Okay. So, um, but if we turn it off, right, it's going to slow down and it's not going to be off like we desire it to be. It's going to be slowing down to that speed. So our current fan speed is always going to be the fan speed that is currently running and fan speed is going to be our desired fan speed. Okay, I should have actually uh, named that variable desired fan speed. Um, this fan speed should have been called desired fan speed, but it's the same, you know, it's, it's, it's really okay. Um, it's just a way of naming. I, I kind of regret that I didn't name this desired fan speed because it would have been more appropriate. But anyway, I just wanted to, to give that understanding. So current fan speed is our actual fan speed and our fan speed is going to be, or the global variable fan speed is going to be our desired fan speed, okay? So, uh, so yeah. So um, once we've set our, our, our uh, current fan speed to zero, which is gonna be accurate because our, uh, the, the, starting the starting value of our fan speed is going to be set to zero and we want that to be the case. We want it to start in the off position, okay? So we're just setting this to zero, okay? Um, at this, at, as soon as the unit is spawned. And notice that I didn't put this in the level unit or in the level flow because this is a local variable. It is only readable from this specific unit, okay? So we don't wanna um, set that in the level flow. We're gonna set that in our unit flow for this specific unit because it's, 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 its scope is only to this unit, okay? So, um, so yeah, so once we have um, initialize this variable, we can now use it in our 
um, in our sequence here and it'll it'll work properly because we always want to know our starting values it's really important to always initialize your your variables okay so uh, again we're we're setting our fan speed which is a global variable uh, to zero at start in the level flow and we're setting our current fan speed uh, to zero here in the unit flow so they're both equal at the start okay they're both equal to zero now the next thing we're going to do is I'm not even going to worry about this fan set you know what let me do it really quick um, so the the fan sounds are a little more complicated than just triggering a sound because they have to slowly increase in speed just like the the fan speed does okay so they're going fum, 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 and getting faster right and then going slower fum, 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 right so um, what we're using is a real-time parameter control which is really cool but it's really outside the scope of this lesson. Um, this lesson's kind of complicated enough. I don't want to overwhelm you with audio also, um, but just understand that we're going to be using the fan speed to drive a variable in our audio, okay? Um, and all this, this offset is doing is it's just basically offsetting the two fans. Um, so they're, they're not equal. This is just a random variable. And since each of these ceiling fans are separate, um, logically they both run this code but they both run them independently so one is going to get uh, you know a variable between 0 and 0.3 and they're going to that's going to give it a natural little bit of offset when the when the sound is playing so this is kind of advanced uh, like I said I, sh I shouldn't even go into it and I, I, I didn't really want to um, it's just uh, you know triggering sounds is a whole nother ball of wax and using real-time parameter controls is way out of scope okay so um, I will do an audio tutorial, just this is not the one where I'm going to do it in. So you can kind of disregard all of this stuff. I'm just going to put it up to the right. Um, if you want to look through it and try to understand it, feel free. Um, it's, in the, uh, it's, in the, it's in the project, but I'm going to just kind of move it out of the way because we don't even have to worry about that. This would work entirely if we just disconnected this and forgot about it. It would just not have the sounds, okay? So, um, so anyway, so yeah, forget that almost entirely, but if you want to, you can look into it if you'd like. Um, I'm, I'm just not gonna go into details on how that's set up, okay? So, um, so again, we have initialized our, fans, our current fan speed to zero, and the next thing we're doing is just kind of relaying that out. Again, this could have been just done from unit spawned. I could have just gone to here. It's just a little cleaner to go in sequence. Um, so from here, I'm then setting our animation to be playing, okay? Um, and again, it's going to be reading our current fan speed, okay? Now, our current fan speed is equal to zero. Zero is gonna be multiplied by three. And three times zero is zero, so this speed is still zero, okay? So what we're doing is we're playing the animation, but we're setting the speed to zero, okay? So that's, that's what this is doing. Um, and this is really kind of cool because if you think about it, this is really what we're doing, right? Like as we change fans, current fan speed, we're just giving it a little multiplier to make it a little faster, really. We could just do this, right? We could just get that out of the way, and that would be the same. It would just be a much slower rate of, of, of rotation, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm just kind of increasing the amount that it rotates, okay? So this would be, if I were to do this again, sorry, um, if I do this, right? And we're just going from current fan speed. Whatever current fan speed is, is what our speed is going to be. So... If current fan speed is three, then this will be three. If current, span uh, current fan speed is one, then the speed is gonna be one, okay? But to give it more oomph, to give it more movement, um, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm multiplying it by this three value. And this gives me nice control because now, if I wanna you know, radically control the, the rates of speeds, all I have to do is change this one number. And whatever this is, multi you know, if, like, if I set this to one, right? Now it's linear. So if this is equal to one, one times one is equal to one, so speed is one. If this is two, two times one is two, speed is equal to two. So this is you know, exactly you know, making it equal. Um, but if I want to, I can make it faster, which I did. Um, I wanted to make it quicker, okay? So here I'm just doing a multiplier to increase the fan speed without actually having to worry about altering my current fan speed. This is just gonna put a multiplier on it and move the animation quicker or slower, 
Okay, so, um, so that's all that's doing. But in the beginning, because current fan speed is equal to zero, zero times three is equal to zero, so our current speed is zero on this, uh, on this animation clip. And we're playing it right at the start of the, uh, of the, of the thing. So right when unit is spawned, we're gonna be playing our animation at zero. Okay, so it's gonna be playing, but it's really not moving. It's just gonna look like it's stopped but it's actually in play, okay? So that's, that's the first thing to understand. Now, how do we control the fan speed is the next question. Now, we could have just used fan speed, um, our global fan speed, and just rapidly switched this uh, from one to two to three to four, just like we're, uh, we're, we're setting it to in our switch, right? So here in our switch, we're setting it to one, we're setting it to two, we're setting it to three, and we're setting it to zero. Now we could have just piped that directly into our current fan speed and we would have been good to go. The only drawback is that we wouldn't have any smoothing, right? The, the animation would just instantly be at one, instantly be at two, instantly be at three, and instantly be stopped, right? And a fan doesn't really work that way. A fan gradiates, it's got momentum. It's not just gonna instantly go there. So what we're doing is we're doing something a little more fancy to control that fan and it's smoothing uh, operation into the next um, animation state, okay? So we're not just gonna be setting it to one, two, three, and four, we're gonna be setting it gradient, we're gonna gradiate it from zero to one, one to two, two to three. So we're gonna make a nice smooth gradient in between them, okay? And how we're doing that is in our level flow. So, I'm, I'm sorry, in our unit flow. So let's take a look at our ceiling fan again. And let's back up a little bit and let's take a look at how this is happening. Okay, so again, we're receiving a message when the fan is switched. Anytime the fan is switched, anytime that switch is moved, okay, or we click, we're gonna go ahead and kick out a message saying that the fan speed has changed, okay? So when that fan speed has changed, we're gonna run another delay loop just like we did um, previously in the other lesson, okay? Now, the delay loop is gonna allow us to do some pretty cool stuff here, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run this loop, and the first time through, it's gonna go ahead and do this compare. And it's gonna say, is the current fan speed equal to fan speed, or again, desired fan speed, right? So fan speed is desired fan speed, always think of it like that. So our desired fan speed is gonna be, let's say one, we just clicked it and moved to one, right? But our current fan speed is zero, right? So we haven't started moving it yet, so it's still set to zero. So if our current fan speed is less than our desired fan speed, so our desired fan speed is one, but this one is equal to zero, well, then we need to increase the speed. So if the desired fan speed is less than our current fan speed, we're gonna go ahead and follow this line, okay? And we're gonna increase our current fan speed, okay? so. Just like we did with our other loops, we're just gonna keep this loop going until they're equal. And once they're equal, we're gonna go ahead and move on. But while they're either less than or greater than, we're gonna either increase or decrease that speed, okay? And this allows us some really neat stuff. So this is why when we switch from, you know, three to zero to one, it'll actually just start slowing down and reach the speed correctly. Okay, because we're doing this compare every single, um, all the time, and anytime they're not equal, they're gonna be doing a test. So it's either gonna be less, and it's gonna be increasing, it's gonna be greater, and it'll be decreasing, or it'll be equal, and then it does nothing, right? So we're always in flux here, and allowing our fan speeds to equalize, okay? So it's really, it's really actually kind of neat. So let's, let's run through this with, with the full state. I'm, I'm sorry, I kind of jump around a little bit, but I'm hoping you understand. Um, so our delay node hits, we compare the numerics, our current fan speed is different than our uh, desired fan speed, so it's gonna go either less or equal depending on which way it's different. So if it's faster, then it's gonna slow down. If it's slower, then it's gonna speed up, okay? And we're gonna increment it by 0 0.05 or 0 0.005 each time, okay? So we're constantly increasing our fan speed or decreasing our fan speed, and when it equalizes, 
we're going to be over here, okay? Or actually, anytime it, it runs this, it's going to go ahead and do this compare. And this compare is simple. This, this is just testing to see if it's zero. So one thing that is a little tricky is that when using these kind of operations, we want to make sure we're not allowing zero to take place, okay? And that we're not sending resume zero on our animation because it'll start acting really wonky, okay? So um, if it's greater, we're going to go ahead and resume our animation. If it actually hits zero, then we want to pause the animation, okay? So we're going to hit pause. So anytime this is, uh, you know, equal to zero or less than or equal to zero, we're gonna make sure that we pause it, okay? But if it's greater, anytime that this is greater than zero, our current fan speed is greater than zero, then we wanna go ahead and play, okay? And again, we're gonna go ahead and keep that loop going, okay? So once this gets started, we're just gonna keep running it and keep running it unless, um, unless it's equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then we're gonna stop that loop, okay? and um, just pause the animation because we don't need to do all this operation, okay? So this is really only happening when our loop is in effect, okay? And um, we're, we're gonna be needing to make sure that it's, we're checking to see is the fan speed correct um, to the, the current fan speed. So our desired fan speed should always be trying to reach the, the current fan speed, okay? So, um, I'm sorry, the other way around current fan speed should always be trying to reach our desired fan speed. And unless it's equal to zero, we're gonna do a, go ahead and run that test, okay? So um, let's, uh, let's run through this one more time really quickly. Um, so we receive a message from the switch that says our fan speed has changed, okay? We begin our delay loop and we start to compare the numerics of the current fan speed versus the fan speed. If they are in equal, then we're gonna go ahead and do either increase or decrease depending upon which one we want, okay? So we're gonna either increase our fan speed or decrease the fan speed. And then once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and compare these numerics. We're gonna set our, um, or we're gonna compare the current fan speed to zero. If the current fan speed is greater than or equal to zero, um, or um, yeah, greater than or equal to zero, we're gonna go ahead and play or resume our animation. If it is less than or equal to zero, we're gonna make sure that we pause that animation, okay? And um, when we hit the, the resume or play, I just want you to realize that we're doing this virtually every frame. So therefore, this current fan speed is always being fed into our speed. So whatever our current fan speed is, um, as we set it here, so we're increasing the current fan speed, we're actually placing that fan speed into use for the fan speed of our animation clip, okay? So the clip of our animation is constantly reading, what is my current fan speed? And we're just multiplying it by three to give it a little more oomph, okay? So um, again, we could just plug this into here and it would be the same thing, it would just be slower, all right? Um, so that is how we're handling the logic of our fan. Okay, so let's just recap uh, one last time. I know I'm, I'm going through this over and over and over again, but um, it's probably pretty good. Uh, I know if I was doing this for the first time, I'd want someone to go through this a couple times with me also. Um, so let's just go through the entire process from start to finish uh, really rapidly and let's look at what's happening, okay? So um, let's go to our level viewport and let's just really summarize what's happening, okay? So we're going to look at our, our switch. We're going to have the ability to roll over it and get that to change its color um, so that we have positive affirmation that we are actually looking at the object. And we're also going to check to see if when we click on it, uh, what will happen, okay? So we're going we're gonna to click, we're going to move the, the animation of the uh, switch to a position, we're going to change a, va a variable, and um, we're going to relay that switch and variable to our fan, which is a totally different animation, and we're going to give it parameters on itself 
to go ahead and alter its speed. So let's look through how that gets done one more time. So let's look at our, um, our unit flow and let's start with the switch again. So one more time, really, really quickly, uh, let's go through this. So we're sending out a Raycast. If the Raycast connects at any time on every frame, we're gonna check to see if I am looking at it, okay? And if I am looking at it, okay, I'm gonna compare uh, the switch unit with the, uh, the Raycast, if they are equal, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my color to yellow. If I am not looking at it, I'm gonna set it to white, okay? Um, and that's really all that's happening in our rollover. In our adjust fan speed, uh, what we're doing is we're gonna go ahead and check for a click. So when I press on the button, if I am looking at the unit while I press the button, uh, we're gonna go ahead and alter our fan speed um, by, uh, by an amount. So it's gonna either be set here as a one. So again, fan speed is gonna be like our desired fan speed. So we're gonna go ahead and click. We're gonna say, I would desire the fan to be ro rotating at one, um, or I'm gonna be desiring it to be two, or I'm gonna desire it to be three, and I'm gonna desire it to be zero, okay? And we're just doing a sequential if then else statement basically right here by going ahead and comparing uh, against the fan speed and we're gonna then either you know if, if it's you know one if this is equal to zero we're gonna set it to one if it's equal to one we're gonna set it to two if it's equal to two we're gonna set it to three if it's equal to three we're gonna set it to zero we're then gonna go ahead and send out a message that the fan speed has changed we're then gonna look at it with our ceiling fan we're gonna receive that input and we're then gonna go ahead and start a delay loop and we're gonna start doing some checks on what the two fan speeds are. So we have our desired fan speed on the bottom and our current fan speed on the top. And as long as they are equal, they will do nothing. Uh, but if they are unequal, then they will either increase or decrease their speed uh, based on um, this result, okay? So um, if it's decreasing, it's just gonna constantly run that loop over and over and over again. This loop is gonna happen over and over and over. So as long as decrease is being triggered, we're gonna be reducing that speed by 0 0.005 until it reaches or equalizes our current fan speed, okay? So if our current fan speed and our global, uh, our global fan speed are um, different, they're gonna be either checking for less or greater because they're not equal. If they are equal, they just bypass uh, the adjustment and speed. And then just check to see are they, you know, is this equal to zero? We want to make sure that it, it is not um, equal to zero while we're sending this resume command. Because again, if we are sending this resume command while uh, the current fan speed is equal to zero, we're going to go ahead and get some really wonky results. So we don't want those wonky results. So we make sure we pause when the fan speed is equal to zero, okay? Up here, it doesn't really matter that the fan speed is zero because we only do it once. So it's set. Whereas with the resume, uh, the resume of zero will always give it some sort of a little wonkiness. So we don't want that to happen. Um, and that's why we're doing it here. So again, we're gonna make sure that this is, um, if it is ever equal to zero, or the fan speed is equal to, you know, the current fan speed is equal to zero, we're not gonna resume anymore. We're just gonna pause. Okay, um, and every other time we're gonna go ahead and run this check uh, to make sure that um, our, our, fans, our current fan speed is trying to reach the fan speed. And uh, that's basically uh, what we got going here. Um, and at its core, uh, the, the, the play fan animation is really what we're doing. So all we're, we're effectively doing is, is adjusting this current fan speed, which is being piped into the speed of the animation clip so we're adjusting that speed at, uh, you know, basically whenever this is uh, changing. So, and we're just always sending this resume command to make sure that that is, uh, that is happening. So if, um, you know, if we just set this to a, a specific number, our fan speed would always run at that number, but because we can alter this and then give the resume command, it'll constantly uh, adjust the speed of our playback of this animation clip. So uh, really, really cool and really fun uh, way to manage your uh, animation. And note that this is a simple animation. We're not doing anything complicated with our, our state machine. Um, this is just using logic to control our fan speed of our animation clip.
okay? So um, I, I know we went through a whole lot of information on this, um, and I didn't really have the luxury of being able to walk you through it step by step. So I do hope that you were able to uh, comprehend and get a grasp on everything um, and uh, understand where we, where we went with this uh, to get to where we got to. Um, again, the files are all here. So um, please do look through them and try to understand it. If you didn't understand from my uh, instruction, um, you know, go ahead and go through it and, and work through it and, and stick with it until you understand it. Um, I'm pretty sure you'll get it and uh, you'll, you'll be much, much better off for knowing how to do this kind of thing. Um, because you know, knowing how to use this kind of logic is really, really helpful. You'll, you'll find it useful all the time.